Welcome to TechWise TV. My name is Rob Boyd. Today, HyperFlex 4.0. That's right, it's time to check back in with our favorite hyperconvergence platform now hitting its stride and its fourth TechWise TV episode. What a ride it has been from initial launch to market leadership as proven with recognition from Forrester Wave and the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Well, Mike Zimmerman is going to join us here in the lab to show us just how easy it all gets with HyperFlex at the Edge and Intersight, Cisco's cloud-based automation and analytics platform. We also have guests from both Intel and Citrix as we dive into the how, what, and why around storage performance and what that's doing for our customers with all NVMe. But first, KD, the face of Cisco HyperFlex, for this show anyway, joins me right now in the lounge. Well, all right, KD, hey, so good to have you back here. We're talking HyperFlex, of course, right? Yes, we are. You're always here for HyperFlex because now it's 4.0. You guys continue to come out with new innovations. Um, but let, let's set the groundwork first and just kind of from your perspective, what is the state of the data center these days? Yeah, I think the fundamental question is what is the data center? Oh. And the data center is where the data is. Okay. But something's changing. The data is moving, right? It's moving into the cloud, some of it. And some of it is moving into the edge, the edge location. So the data center that now needs to move to all of these locations. The data center needs to move to the edge and needs to move to the cloud. But all of these, whether it's the edge, the cloud, or the core, need to work together to deliver what our customers are looking for. Uh, help me understand, what is important about what we're doing now with 4.0? What do you hang your hat on? Well, the first thing on 4.0 is what we're doing in the edge environments. Okay. So we've got the HyperFlex two node edge uh, device for, for those environments. It's managed from the cloud with Intersight. And it's managed uh, with a nifty new innovation called a cloud witness that allows okay. us to have a really slim form factor two node uh, appliance at the edge locations that offers the same data resiliency that you would typically get from a three node, a much, a much heavier infrastructure with, from the other players. Oh, interesting, because the importance at certain edge locations is how small can you go but still have a level of performance and a level of, a level of data integrity and availability That's exactly that right. you normally wouldn't associate with a, with a site that small, but the importance of the edge is saying we need answers for that area. We need answers for okay. that area, but more importantly, we need to drive the simplicity that people demand, right? Okay. So what's happening on the edge locations is, um, People want to deploy a lot of edge locations in a very short amount of time with the level of control and simplicity they want. Right. So let's take an example. Let's say you, you were a store that had a, you know, 100 different edge storefronts, okay. and you wanted to deploy an edge cluster, each one of those. In the past, you'd have racked and stacked all, all right. the equipment in one location, then trucked it from location one to location two to location three, and actually moved or flown people and technicians to each one of those locations to get these things up. It's super error prone, and it takes a lot of time. Well, how do we get past something like that? Well, we've got Intersight to help us today with HyperFlex Edge. Okay. What we do is we just send all the equipment in parallel to all the locations. The equipment calls in to the cloud to Intersight. Intersight then delivers from the cloud um, the management capabilities to, to install the okay. system, bring it up, get it running, to upgrade it, to manage it, and to monitor it through its entire life cycle. Okay, so you're talking about a lot less people on the end that have to be involved with setting that up. You just need to, to, to rack it and, and get it on, get an IP address. It's going to be able to get all the information it needs once it's claimed back at the uh, at the central site. And right. Intersight is now going to become your, your central window for all of your management across all your sites in one simple location. That's right. As well. Now, you guys have always been really good about third-party validation testing and, and making sure that uh, that workloads were, were everything we said that we claimed them to be. Uh, Help me understand kind of where that's come out uh, historically, because testing is important, yeah? Yeah, you know how this started was, we got ESG, which is a third party company, to do these tests in a much more controlled, um, neutral way for us, right. comparing us against our competition. Oh. And they found that we could do with four nodes what our competition needed a mountain of nodes to do. Oh right? wow, okay, so you're comparing four nodes to their four nodes, and you're seeing higher performance on a, on a comparison of nodes between competitors. Yeah, four nodes to four nodes, we get higher performance, better consistency. But if you just take what our four nodes can do, you will need a um, big multiple of nodes, depending on which comp competition you're hmm. looking at, to do the same thing that we can do. To support the same number of VMs, you'll need much, much more from our competition. Well, what, what, does, that, what, what, what does that translate to in terms of uh, customers? Uh, if they just deploy a few more nodes, is that a big deal, or does it make a big difference? Well, first of all, they're paying more, right? So they're paying okay. more for the nodes. 
It's much more licensing costs. It's much more space in the data center. It's much more cooling and complexity in terms of rack management and so forth. But then again, even if they did all that, let's say money was no object for these guys, which it isn't, yeah. but let's say it was, they're still not getting the consistency that we deliver with our four nodes, even with their much more complicated system. Okay, well now that you guys have done those comparisons, I've seen those, uh, and that was the all flash system, which is still right. really does really well. Uh, but amazingly enough, what's been the testing now with all NVMe? So all NVMe takes us to a whole different level, right? Mm -hmm. And when we started looking at the all NVMe performance, we said, well, who do we compare against? And we really needed to now look at the next best thing that was out there, which was our all flash system. So we had ESG look at you know, our all NVMe versus our all flash system, and you again deliver much, much more for the customers on this, much better performance, much lower latency, really you know, shines in those applications that demand it, like, like the databases, oracles, and so forth of the world. Oh wow, so a lot of mission critical workloads now can, can run on these hyper-converged systems from Cisco specifically, so HyperFlex, That's right. you don't really need to, uh, to worry as much about whether or not uh, you can count on it. You've got the performance and the latency that demand. Uh, before we go, and we're going to go to a panel in just a moment and talk to Intel and Citrix that's and right. talk a little bit about the co-innovation that's been happening there, but I wanted to ask you, uh, you were with Google Next recently. We made some announcements there. I wonder if you could just give us a little uh, recap. What is it you, we announced at uh, Google Next? So when IT wants to serve its internal uh, stakeholders, one of those stakeholders is developers, and what developers are talking about is containers today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Google's a leader in that space. True. Google pioneered Kubernetes, yep. which is one of the dominant technologies in the space. We've been working with Google for a long time on this technology. In fact, uh, we got the uh, technology partner of the year award two years in a row for the container category. So we announced a little bit about our partnership last year. Right. Uh, earlier, uh, we announced uh, at, at the Google Next event a partnership with Google Cloud's Anthos. Okay. Now what Anthos does is it takes uh, the Kubernetes control plane mm -hmm. and delivers that from the Google Cloud. Oh. But to take that Google technology and democratize it for enterprise customers to use in their controlled data centers, that's where we come in. Right. So we've okay. partnered with them with a number of technologies. Hyperflex as the elastic infrastructure on which Anthos will run with persistent storage plugins that we've co-developed with them so that their containers can access the storage in our infrastructure. Um, we manage our infrastructure from the cloud with InnerSight. They manage Anthos from the cloud with their control plane. Networking is important when you're talking containers because right. now you've got to network at multiple different layers. You've got the physical network, you've got a container networking um, uh, area, you've got this virtual network, and you've got networking at the services layer. Um, if all of these aren't married together and don't work consistently in terms of policy and intent, you get chaos. So we're working with them with ACI and their technology in order to integrate those networking technologies. So there's a number of technologies from Cisco and, and Google coming together to bring to enterprise IT a elastic infrastructure that they can support containers on for their stakeholders, their developer stakeholders back home. Wow, okay, you guys have been busy. A lot, a lot of stuff happening. Thank you so much. I know we're not saying goodbye yet because in just a moment we're going to go, we're going to go step into the panel. We'll talk to Citrix and Intel, uh, and after that we're going to be in the lab with Mike Zimmerman, where we actually get to see what it looks like doing this type of deployment through Intersight and get a little bit of a look at the gear. It's going to blow your mind just how easy this stuff is getting. But hold on for that first. We go to the panel right now. All right, so we have a panel, a panel of experts, no less. Katie, of course, anytime I'm talking Hyperflex. Also, Jim from Citrix, thank you so much for joining us. Here. John from Intel. You guys represent a lot of work that's been going on recently. Let's start from a Citrix perspective. We talk about new things with Hyperflex on this show today. Uh, you guys have been right there with us working on uh, new services and possibilities for your customers as we work together. Can you go through a little bit of that? Yeah, you know, at Citrix, we think about the future of work, right? In fact, we think a lot about the future of work. But in particular, we talk about the digital workspace, and that's really the aggregation of multiple applications, whether it's mobile apps, SaaS apps, virtual apps, or on-prem apps, okay. and present those together with files and data in a unified fashion for, for the worker. Uh, the, the beauty of, is that we can now deliver that via a Citrix Cloud service, uh, which is really a control plane that sits in the cloud, mm -hmm. but allows for that apps and data to be residing locally on-premises, in this case, on a Hyperflex environment, right? Um, 
And so that provides a little bit more security level of control for the customer to be able to do that. And what we've done is establish a cloud connector between Hyperflex and Citrus Cloud Services okay. that allows for a simplified deployment and manageability of those environments. Oh, interesting. So on the edge appliance, because it still becomes important even in these mixed environments, something we have to be able to process at that edge. Yeah, Is I mean, it's a recurring theme, just like we talked about, as data moves everywhere, right. as work moves everywhere, data centers move everywhere, you need a control plane in the cloud, whether it's for infrastructure, yeah. which is what we do with InnerSight, or whether it's for work and, and the Citrix uh, ecosystem, that you need a control plane in the cloud to manage the, the workspace on, the, on yeah. the edge. So we need that control, we need that flexibility, we also need performance. Yes, you do. And I'm thinking that's a, that's a popular word at Intel. Uh, what, what, have, what have you guys been doing lately for performance? It's definitely part of our DNA, and I think one of the holy grails we look at for performance is the relationship between the CPU, memory, and storage, and what right. we can do to open up more high bandwidth connectivity between there to get better utilization and ultimately allow you to do more with that data that you get through. So for us, Optane technology is one yeah. of the most exciting developments over the last 25 years for the memory world. And being able to take NVMe technology now bring it to life, high speed interconnect with the CPU, working on this spec, working on the platform engineering with Cisco, doing the optimizations with our partners at Cistrix, and bringing together performance that is exponentially better than what we could have delivered with previous traditional all flash environments, right. it's exciting. For anybody that doesn't understand what NVMe is, is there a high level way to maybe explain what it does differently? You know, the way I would look at it is if we look at the traditional relation between memory and the CPU, uh, it's almost like traveling on what I would call a two-lane highway versus a super highway, as far as your ability to push information back and forth between the two in a really coherent high-speed way. And to be able to do that when you can access information with lower latency, higher performance, better endurance, better density, the attributes are compelling. If we look at performance in a SQL or an Oracle world where it's high double-digit improvements over an all-flash environment with latency that's more than 30% reduction, I mean, that's, that's for us, that's the holy grail when you have that meaningful improvement in your ability to process and transact the data with that latency just getting to a place that's pretty compelling. Well, if, uh, one of the things, Rob, just to add to that is all the brilliant work that's happened to make this possible at Intel, right. we've worked together with them, our teams and the Intel teams, to take that, take that innovation and yep. make it enterprise grade so that when a tech in a data center accidentally removes the drive or accidentally inserts the drive, the system recovers from that or doesn't even feel, feel the pinch. Yeah. So making those technologies enterprise grade is something integrated. that's been a perfect collaboration yeah. between the two companies. I wanted to talk about a healthcare example as a, as a way to understand kind of where the rubber hits the road in terms of the increased performance gains that we're seeing here, what we're able to do with Hyperflex and the, the type of applications and databases and things that we can support now that, that maybe weren't ever considered previously are now all on the table, it really seems like. But Jim, you guys have worked with Epic for quite a while. I, just at a high level, can you kind of give us an idea of what Epic is? It's in healthcare, it's about medical records. Um, yeah, what, so certainly happening? Epic is a technology provider that services the healthcare organizations and uh, the ability to provide medical records imaging to either clinicians, organizations, uh, healthcare organizations as well, right? Um, and so they service a highly regulated industry uh, with a lot of mission critical data yeah. as well. Okay. There's less to that platform. Like when, when we think of databases, one thinks of Oracle SQL, SAP, right. and one thinks of medical software, software for the, for the healthcare world, one thinks of Epic. And there's the Epic hyperspace, which is a which is a presentation okay. layer, which is what the doctors and nurses um, interact with when they're looking at your bedside and monitors. Doing that through a Citrix interface. That through right? a Citrix yeah. interface. Yeah. Um, okay. And then there's the Epic Cache database, which requires uh. the performance and all of all of the performance you can throw at it because this is mission critical. And now we're able to support that database and we're able to, obviously the presentation layer, we can do these things with Hyperflex and MVME. Yeah. VR, on this, we are doing yeah. a lot of things along, yeah. with, along with Citrix to, to serve healthcare um, yeah. companies uh, with that presentation layer. With uh, all the innovation that Intel's bringing to the table, that Epic cache database um, gets the performance it needs. Yeah. So we're working along with Epic, with, uh, with our partners at Intel and, and Citrix, to, to make this all work together. Yeah, and I think really what it does is you know, improve reliability, right? The right. better performance, and of course, better experience for the clinicians as well in terms of using that, those medical records. We also think you're in an environment today where workloads are incredibly dynamic. They're right. mixed. You, you no longer have the ability to work at workloads in a very singular fashion. So right. being able to support these mixed environments with high performance, simplified management, the ability to deploy it and be able to serve the needs of that user 
user in that healthcare environment at scale. I mean, that's a pretty profound solution if you get it right. Yeah, you talked about reducing latency, and I'm always struck by the fact that, well, each of us potentially looks at latency as a different set of things, and, and really what we're talking about with this all NVME is we're talking about getting rid of what is essentially that kind of that slow storage area that sometimes doesn't keep up with mm -hmm. the data processing capabilities. Now, you guys are able to marry this much closer so that together we can deliver applications and services uh, in a predictable fashion, which is something yep. we're always fighting to get more of, I think, here. Uh, so this is impressive. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for having us. Uh, appreciate Citrix coming out as well, and appreciate your partnership, because there's a lot more stuff coming out as we move forward. Thank you. Any final word, Katie? Yeah, what I would say is it is so unbelievable to have partners such as Intel, such as Citrix, innovating and getting us all this innovation so that we as Cisco can certainly innovate within our walls, right. but we can innovate with partners and bring those technologies to market, whether it's the healthcare market or whether it's any kind of market in the data center or at the edge. Yeah, thanks for helping us make some really Very great good. platforms. Mike, welcome to TechWise TV. Always excited when someone's willing to bring in the gear, especially when the gear is not that easy to travel with. Um, tell me a little bit about what you brought here first. Sure, we've got a couple different things to look at. Here closest to me uh, are a couple different systems, but these would be more traditionally found in the core or the data center. So the first thing that we've got with HX 4.0 is our all NVMe converge node for nice. HyperFlex. Yep. Okay. Uh, so it's a one RU uh, system with all uh, NVMe drives in it. Uh, we've also got our all flash 240, which is a two RU. Okay. And again, these are traditionally you know higher performance, uh, traditionally found more yeah. in the core and data center. Uh, they're closest to you, we've got a two node edge system. So something uh, new with HX 4.0 is oh, yeah. our two node, three node, and four node uh, options there for edge. So oh, we can yeah. actually deploy a remote edge deployment it, this small yep. with yep. just these two nodes. But uh, one of the big stories we talk about 4.0 is we talk about intersight. Yep. Uh, so we're talking about different things we can do with nodes and we're also talking about intersight. I wonder if we'd start there. You've got this up on screen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So intersight really enables you know our, our global view really of our infrastructure, any UCS-based infrastructure, right? So if it's your UCS oh, servers okay. and your HyperFlex clusters. So as we talk about, uh, you know, data at the edge and infrastructure at the edge, as well as obviously we know customers have data centers still as well, um, you know, it becomes a lot to manage and, and really being able to get a global view of all of your infrastructure across the globe is huge within Intersight. Okay. Uh, so what we're looking at here is uh, the dashboard for Intersight. So as, a, as an admin, when I log in, I can see my customized view of the information that's really pertinent to me or my business, right? Okay. So, um, you know, in this case, I've got HyperFlex uh, information up here, but but don't forget, UCS is also a big Good part of, of Intersight as well. Uh, so again, that's that customized dashboard that I see when I log in. Um, we also, just something I want to point out here is with Intersight, this is a, a cloud-based, uh, you know, a run by uh, Cisco uh, yeah. offering, right? So uh, it's a SaaS model. And the cool thing here is that we can uh, add new features to Intersight uh, really as quickly as we can develop them. So customers don't have to wait for uh, yeah. Upgrading their management systems. That so type this of is thing. how you know is that white line pops up and you that's go. Right. By and the you way, you've more. got more capabilities. That's right. That's right. You yeah. learn more by clicking here. I like that um, in my Meraki so, and some other things yeah. that I use at home. You're yeah. always on the latest version. Have okay. the latest bug fixes. That type of thing. Oh, perfect. Um, so now what we can do? We, we've kind of seen our dashboard here. Let's let's uh, quickly go over to our HyperFlex clusters view here, and you can see I've got four HyperFlex clusters running here. I've got three edge clusters here. Okay. So these are all two-node HyperFlex edge. Uh, systems. I've got one just to show you uh, kind of across the globe here. I've got one running in Atlanta, one's actually in Colorado, okay. uh, and one's in Sydney, Australia as well. Uh, and then our fourth one here is actually an all NVMe. So this is actually running back in our data center actually here in San Jose. Okay, just like this one here. That's okay, right. Perfect. That's right. So what we can actually do is uh, drill down, you know, we've got that high level view, but let's say we want to now kind of drill down into a specific cluster. Okay. Uh, how do we do that? So we can actually pick a cluster here, just go over here to the actions here, and we'll launch HyperFlex Connect. So this is now a kind of streamlined view, and this is this is, should be very familiar to our HyperFlex yeah. customers because this is the same kind of management platform that's now proxied through Intersight. Yeah. So now we get that specific cluster view, creating things like virtual machines and clones and creating data stores, that type of thing. So very familiar, right where you knew you'd that's be, right. but you did not have to open any other application to get to that's this right. point. It's all from okay. Intersight, that's right. Very nice, yeah. we just and jumped we, to Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, and, and the really cool thing, you know, we've been talking about the, uh, the HyperFlex 4.0 two-node edge system, right? Yes, this one here. Uh, and really, when you think about a two-node clustered system, uh, sometimes that can bring issues, and sometimes you have to run things uh, of something called a witness or, or an arbitrator. Yeah. Um, so our, our competitors, uh, typically this is a virtual machine for each cluster 
that you would have to deploy and operate and manage, upgrade, that type of thing. Yeah, to I understand that better. Business. You have a slide on this. Let's bring that slide yep. up for one second. So yep. understanding when we when you talk about an invisible cloud witness, you're talking about solving an issue that some may forget about when you get down to two nodes. What is that problem that's being solved here? That's right, when you have a, a clustered system that's only two nodes, you know, it, it, and those nodes lose connectivity, um, both nodes kind of think the other one uh, you know, it's not healthy, right? So, yeah. so they kind of take control. They want to take control. They want to be the master, right? So it's kind of a, a, a short way to, to explain that. But, it sounds uh, like when I leave my two teenagers at home and I'm traveling out <laughs> here to San Jose, they're both in fight for control. That's right, that's right. But so this you, is an arbiter. That's right, so you have an arbitrator, a witness, witness virtual okay. machine. Uh, sometimes that's as many as one VM per cluster. Uh, and so you can imagine running resources or, or resources that are required to run those virtual machines, especially at, at large scale. Yeah. Um, tens, hundreds, thousands of clusters. That's the and same the number of virtual machines. the only thing it's machines. doing is simply resolving arguments or That's potential right. disputes between these two boxes, That's right. which is a big thing and an important thing to do, but you're saying we can do it in an invisible way, so in other words, light, no touch support That's right. through intersite? That's right, and okay. you know, so you see here, if it's one site up to, you know, uh, beyond 2,000 yeah. sites, it doesn't matter. This is all invisible behind the scenes from Intersight. There's no management burden for our customers. There's no cost. It's, yeah. it's included it's in the free. base license. We do it like the cloud. We got security taken care of in there. It's a silent protocol, and I believe you had told me it does not use much in terms of resources across the WAN. That's right. So you're not going to very feel light. It. You're yeah. not going to notice that yep. at all. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, let's, let's go back over to your uh, to your Intersight interface. Yep. yep. Um, tell me what's important to. Uh, to go to from here. Yeah, so now we're going to kind of take a look at, uh, you know, what does it take to actually create a Hyperflex cluster through Intersight? Okay. Uh, and, and this process uh, really comes from our heritage with UCS, right? If, if you're, you, you know service uh, profiles, know right, Rob? Yeah. So uh, these service profiles are really logical configurations that we can apply to a physical server. So we actually take the same approach with Hyperflex Makes clusters in this case. Sense. We have something called Hyperflex cluster profiles. And that profile, that Hyperflex cluster profile is is again really very analogous to a, a UCS service profile where we can define the configuration and then apply it to a system after the fact. So right. let's say that I'm working to, on a big deployment, I could be building everything I care about in software here through Intersight yep. before anything has had to ship, and once it ships, as I believe you had said, as part of a deployment, or maybe we haven't talked about that part yet, but the idea is that they can come in and be connected, I think I heard that from KD, they yeah. come in and they claim ownership essentially within Intersight. That's right, I mean, you think about if you're rolling out a number of edge sites, right, uh, really the ideal situation is I can ship the, the, uh, the gear out to each site not really have to send all my expertise. You know, it's, it's yeah. very expensive to send your, your experts out to each site and go configure that. Can we ship it for them, like straight from the factory? We can, kind of so thing? we ship it so right from the factory. So they don't have to touch them in a central site at all? Right, you don't have to stage it oh. in the data center. Okay. Ship it right to the, the, uh, the target site, basically the edge site. Uh, and we basically need an IP on the system for management. At that point, we can manage and push down the configuration from Intersight. That's the way things are done these days. Yep. Yeah, yep. about time we did it for compute. I like it. <laughs> okay. And so this is just kind of showing uh, a, a deployed, our, our our two node edge cluster in Atlanta uh, showing our profile and, and this really is just a collection of policies that define the information required to create a cluster. Yeah. Um, so things like IPs, uh, DNS, time And these zone, literally are just thing. text files, aren't they? So they uh, mean, they're, they're policies. These policies are, become something so you can replicate them, you can modify them in small ways if, if necessary? You can modify. The cool thing is the reusability. Uh -huh. So, right, if, if I'm creating uh, a number of different cluster profiles, some of that data, some of that information is going to be unique, but some of that's going to be reusable too, right? right? Um, so Waste not, want not. That's right. If I have multiple <laughs> sites in the same time zone, yeah. they may use the same DNS and NTP server, right? So right. we create one policy and we can use that policy across multiple cluster profiles. That kind of reminds me, and I hope I'm not jumping out of order here, but in just in terms of automation, no. what type of tools exist for us to be able to interact with this? With if maybe we're already bought into some automated or script-based things. That's right. At the very least. Everything you see in the UI is available via the the, the rich API as well. So there's a REST-based API. So okay. the really cool thing is when we talk about scale, you know, uh, large, you know, hundred uh, sites, thousand sites, that type of thing. Right. If you're doing those types of deployments, we can actually create all the data in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and feed that into Intersight and have it create the policies and profiles. You know, if you're talking a thousand sites, I mean, yeah. that's huge, right? Yeah. So, uh, and again, what we talked about is all the gear for those thousand sites can be sent directly to each location. Yeah. And then all we do is, is marry the two together, the HX cluster okay. profile with the gear that's actually I like the logic of that. Site. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it really just becomes a no-brainer in terms of deploying across, you know, a, a large scale uh, number of environments. Absolutely. So, 
Yeah. So you know we've talked about uh, uh, you know creating through APIs, mm -hmm. right, at a large scale. Uh, we've talked about the, the the policies and profiles here. The the other thing we can do is we can actually clone uh, cluster profiles as well. So you know if we're maybe creating okay. a few, uh, you know, not a large number, let's say, we can actually select a cluster profile uh, and clone as well. Okay. Yep. So we're going to click clone. And, and again, we can create one or more cluster profiles. Okay, so you here can do this in mass, or you can do it one onesie twosie. That's right. As needed, it seems pretty easy and straightforward, right. intuitive. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and the other, the cool thing here is, you know, we've talked about deployments, right? But when we start talking about day two operations too, oh, right? Yeah, we, we talked about the, run the operation afterwards. That's right. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we, we got to keep these things running, right? Yeah. So, so Intersight um, helps with that as well. Uh, that's right. So we can actually um, uh, do uh, things like uh, upgrades. Through, through Intersight as well. So we can actually select one or more clusters uh, and select a target uh, version of okay. Hyperflex and upgrade those as well in parallel. That's the cool thing. You know, it's not one at a time. So, oh, okay. So this, uh, oh, okay, very nice. Um, and I assume Inter obviously Intersight's also telling you if you've got anything that's kind of out of balance, that's right. if you will, in terms of things being at different levels or that's something right. like that. So when we talk about automatic upgrades because it's a cloud-based system, we're only talking about the interface and the, the system running that, so it's not touching your operation. You're obviously fully in control right. of what you decide to push out. That's right. Um, and kind of a good segue into uh, something we call connected TAC as well. So. Oh. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, uh, you know, something that in, and customers can actually opt into uh, having Intersight uh, create TAC cases for them too, right? So if we if we notice a, an issue with the drive, so maybe even before a customer notices, the Intersight can can open TAC cases automatically. So it sounds like we're moving to a much more proactive notion of what TAC can do. There's an awareness right. before you're having to um, get right. involved per se. So when you do talk to TAC, they're already in motion on something or aware of something, so that you're both. Yep. Moving at the speed of the business issue. It's being proactive and taking yeah. the burden off and the cost off the customer. Yep. But I just want to make sure everyone understands, or make sure I understand, yep. it's, is it Intersight is a, it has a free tier that we encourage everyone running UCS or Hyperflex. Yep. Uh, you can participate in the system. Very simple to, to just simply see what kind of data you can see, because what you'll notice is there's some free things. What are some free things that we get out of Intersight right off the bat? Pretty much everything we've talked about here oh, is available that in, that, in that free base tier. Uh, okay. And if you have a, a Cisco uh, CCO uh, account, which pretty right. much anybody with Everybody an email, an email account, you can log in to Intersight and start managing your components from the, your UCS-based components from there. Oh, yeah. And then when you start adding up, then you say connect to TAC and some other things like that may cost a bit more, but you can at least start getting immediately getting the visibility That's right. and understanding of what's happening. Add your components there, you, you kind of see the value. See, we can't uh, get enough that visibility there, yeah. stuff. I think that's... Yeah an incredible amount of value right off the bat. Mike, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for Appreciate having me. your time. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today about Hyperflex 4.0. Be sure and check out Intersight. That's an obvious one, but obviously go to the website you find on the screen for more information. Thanks for watching TechWise TV. We'll see you on the next one.